Sure, yeah. I... All right, okay. Give me one second, I'll share my screen. All right, okay. Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you can uh, hear me and see my screen as well. Uh, just give me a thumbs up. Afia, can you confirm that you're able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you and see your screen as well, Jitendra. All you. right, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Jitendra Mehta. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, uh, how cloud computing uh, could be your game changer, how the what exactly the cloud computing is. And then we'll be talking about uh, uh, what are the different opportunities we have, what are the areas of growth. But before that, actually, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm working as a cloud director uh, for Oracle Corporation. I have overall 20 years of experience. And in last some, um, since I would say since 2012, I'm working on uh, cloud technologies. Uh, I'm AWS certified. Uh, architect, uh, Microsoft certified architect, and now I'm working on the Oracle cloud technology. So I have experience in uh, uh, different cloud flavors. Uh, that that's a little bit about me. Uh, agenda we just spoke. So before we before we move ahead, uh, uh, I just want to give you a brief about that. What exactly is the cloud computing? I'm sure that uh, by now that we all know because cloud is something which we we all understand. Uh, and how the cloud is created, what exactly cloud meaning is. So let's talk about that first, then we'll move on. So if you if you look at my screen, I've just scribbled a little bit for you guys. So, so on the left-hand side, what we have is certain computers. And on the right-hand side, we have uh, 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 the certain sources. And how do we connect them is through via cloud. So that's how the overall cloud is created. This cloud here is nothing, just the shared resources what we're talking about. Uh, I'll share a few more things. When we talk about cloud computing, cloud computing is generally a, a single place or maybe a place where you are keeping all, all your servers, all your storage, all your infrastructure. That is the That is basically your cloud. And then from remotely, we are just accessing that common resources which are put in into a strong, secure place where all the infrastructure and data is residing. And on basis of that infrastructure, there are multiple different technologies can be built. And that as a pass or SaaS services can be used by your uh, by you or maybe by your customers or my maybe by your business. The good thing about cloud computing, the basic concept when cloud computing came up, uh, the first thing was that that it is only OPEX model. There is no CapEx involved when we consume cloud. This is a common place where you don't need to worry about anything about your hardware, about your network. How do you how do you manage the operation for that particular hardware? All that is managed by someone else. You just need to go and use it for the duration you want to use it and pay for the duration. It's like for the for for if you used certain services for six hours, you'll be paying for the six hours, and you don't need to worry about the how the rest of the infrastructure will be managed and all that stuff. So that's that's what is cloud computing. When we compare it uh, in today's world uh, with, with the on-premise data centers versus the cloud data centers, we believe, and that is proven also, that cloud computing is more reliable and more secure because that's where they are putting the world-class standards of securities. So that's a little bit about the cloud computing. Uh, I'll be okay if there are any questions in between and someone can pick it. And uh, accordingly, we can move it. Okay, I uh, that's fine. Or we can take it into the last also. Uh, just move to the next one. Yeah. So a little bit of deep dive on what we were talking about the cloud computing. If you if you look here, uh, we discuss about the basic infrastructure in my last slide when we were talking about the servers, storage, network. In this particular slide, we we talk a little bit more than that. That is like the AI and machine learning using that cloud computing technologies, which is primarily compute and storage and virtual machines, which is built on your compute. 
we can create ai models we can create we can build our containers which is like serverless computing we talking about and then on on top of that we also have the security components here end of the day on your cloud we have all the resources which are shared even you can ask for the dedicated resources for yourself also but the basic funda of having the cloud computing is that it's a common set common pool of resources and then we can share that with other businesses and customers but there are logical gates between the resources we are using and the other businesses are using all that we worry about is what services we require we just register for it and we just use that okay let's take an example that if you want to use a large uh, you want to run a large uh, model on ai model then you don't need to set up the complete infra for that ai modeling you just use that service and move on otherwise if you need to do the data analytics or the artificial intelligence kind of a things that will require lots of infrastructure in the back end but with the help of cloud computing you don't need to do that I'll quickly differentiate how the cloud services is divided into three different parts uh, and i would say that there are three different type of cloud computing are uh, generally into the market uh, first one is infrastructure as a service uh, where we only talk about the infrastructure resources the basic compute the basic the, the servers what we talk storage or maybe uh, uh, then the, the separate network attached to your ies all that you can ask as a uh, infrastructure as a service into cloud computing this is the most common use service we see into the uh, market right now and all the if you look at the uh, if, if you look at the startup ecosystem in overall world or even in india if every startup start building their own data center or start setting up their own servers their infrastructure cost will be very high but with the availability of public cloud they are easily able to use the ias or maybe the any kind of other cloud services and easily just create their products on top of it and just sell it so that's the kind of benefits we get by providing these services the next one is pass like the platform as a service which allows users to develop and they manage their application by leveraging the services and all that is over the internet you just leverage that pass service let's take an example there's a database as a service is one of the pass service or we were talking about the ai or ml as a service or security as a service you can have the security monitoring as a service even just the basic application monitoring as a service so these kind of different pass even backup as a service so there are multiple multiple uh, capabilities or maybe multiple ways to run your application and you need the platform as a service so you can just go and ask for the pass without worrying about what is underlying infra there you don't need to worry about how much server storage is, is going there and you'll have certain sls on top of it uh, and the sls are unbeatable you know that there are 99.89 kind of sla what you get on a pass services from all the top csps uh, uh, just a small uh, there are more hundred more than 200 csps are in the market but we know there are only four or five which are in the top five list but there are so many csps available into the market right now and you can get all kind of flavor as a pass service after that the third one is saas that is software as a service that's where we uh, like we 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 talking on zoom right now so zoom is software as a service or maybe microsoft teams is another example there are other so many like uh, we we talk about crm or erp products so we we do get them as a saas services available on the on the cloud now uh, and uh, there is there is you don't need to worry about building anything by like in pass you need to leverage pass service and build your application saas is an application as a software which is already built on cloud you just need to go and use it on the basis of subscription like let's take an example if you have two users you can register for two users and if you have two lakhs user you can register for the two lakhs user or maybe just think about the emails you are using different email services all those are the saas services you are using right now 
So that's what we call software as a service. So it's very important to understand that which service you need to leverage. Uh, I'll spend two more minutes on this particular slide because this is very important. Day by day, uses of pass is increasing when we talk about the uh, creating new applications. Uh, uh, earlier, we used to have, we used to get our virtual machine created on IIS and then we deploy our own, we, we, we install our own database on top of it or maybe the, any kind of other software you need. You deploy all that kind of a stuff and then you start building your application. But on the past services, you just use containerization or maybe database as a service and just directly start using them for your application development perspective. So past services uses has grown. Uh, what I have seen and I was reading some Gartner report, there is 40 to 50% increase in using the past services in comparison to IS. So we will see some graphs on that also in next few slides. Okay. Uh, we Earlier, we talked about the different type of cloud services. Now we'll be going to talk about the different kind of clouds available right now. Uh, we have, we, we call it public, private cloud and the hybrid cloud. The, the difference between these three is like this. Public cloud is something which is, which is, which is completely available and shareable with other businesses also, I would say in that way. It's completely public service. You will have your own security. You will have your own restrictions there. You'll have your own uh, uh, authorization and authentications enabled for your services. But this is a public service. There are high chances that maybe there is one rack. There are there are eight servers, and out of those eight servers, you are using two servers, or maybe out of one server, you may be using only fifty percent capability of that server. So that's how we define the public service. Okay, these are the public cloud which are provided by any third party. Uh, the some of the major public cloud service provider are uh, Microsoft, AWS, Google, GCP, and then OCI. So these are the major four uh, uh, clouds provider we have currently available into for the public cloud. But we, when we talk about the private cloud, private cloud is like you are creating your own data centers, you're setting up your own infrastructure, and on top of that infrastructure, you're providing services to your customers. So it's like if you have 18 racks kind of a that's a decent size of data center you put in your offices or maybe you 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 need to take care of a space somewhere and then all the heating cooling mechanism all the security parameters and on top of that then you set up your own uh, data centers and then start providing your IES as a capability or maybe certain level of pass as a capability and if you can make some softwares on top of it then maybe the SaaS also so uh, uh, that's the private cloud, but this is dedicated to you. That's your own bungalow, which you're not sharing with anyone. Okay. Uh, I, I can give you an analogy of a hotel. Hotel is, is, a, is a kind of a public cloud where you go, just pay for your room and you just stay. But you are sharing the, the restaurant with everyone. So, and, and the other publicly available facility in any hotel. So that's how the public cloud works. But in private cloud is like your own bungalow where you are, you're the owner of that bungalow and all the facilities available into the private cloud is only for you. And hybrid cloud is mix of both public cloud and private cloud where you have certain, uh, 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 certain environment on-premise with yourself in your private cloud. And then you also have uh, uh, connectivity with any kind of any, any CSP, any, any public cloud provider. So uh, let's take an example. So generally, uh, whenever, uh, though all these major e-commerce platform are already on cloud, but when we look from the government sector perspective, so in government sector, let's take an example of the income tax application. So when the ITR is being filled, they just scale up their application to the cloud. That, that can be a right use case and that discussion is still going on. But for, for good nine months, they are completely on private cloud completely into disconnected mode, maybe bus just for the three months when there is a heavy load onto the ITR, they just scale it up on the public cloud. So that's the right concept of hybrid cloud. That's the that's a combination of both private and the public cloud actually. Um, there's another example of hybrid cloud is that you keep your complete environment on-premise and you only use public cloud for AI ML capabilities. Okay, maybe uh, you, you use the local IES on, on, on private cloud and just for certain pass or SaaS capability, you go into the public cloud. 
so that can also be another example of hybrid cloud uh, uh what what all the csps who are providing public cloud services right now is moving towards the hybrid cloud as well and they are building their products uh, which can manage uh, both public and private cloud at the same time so that's something which is which is into the industry this time uh, am I on the right speed, uh, guys, Manoj, or maybe Afia? I'll take 10 more minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, sure. Continue. Okay, thanks. Uh, quickly, that why cloud? Obviously, that when you don't need to build everything by yourself, you're sharing it with someone else, you're saving cost. And second point is scalability. You can scale it up. We just discussed about the ITR. If you need to scale it up for the certain, certain duration, like when we... Uh, 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 you, you think from the e-commerce platform perspective, if there is any Diwali sale or any Christmas sale, during that time, the users get increases on the e-commerce platform like Amazon or, uh, or the Flipkart. During that time, they can quickly scale up their environment. Like in general, if they are using uh, maybe 100 virtual machines, during those sales time, they can increase it to the 40 more and 140 virtual machines or the backend infrastructure also, the network bandwidth as well. So there are multiple things they can scale up. Uh, and, and you don't need to, you don't need to worry about it. Even with the, there are certain past services available, they will automatically scale up that environment. You, on the basis of load, you just put the limitation there and they will automatically scale it up. So for that scalability, the cloud is obviously the best thing. You can't do it on the private cloud. You can't keep that much infrastructure uh, with you in private cloud because that will increase your cost a lot and uh, there is no ROI on it. So the kind of cost goes into the private cloud and it get depreciated every single day. Like we buy any car, it get depreciated every day. Similar way, if you buy any hardware, it get depreciated from the day one onwards. So there's no logic keeping all that large infrastructure on house. Flexibility, you can pick any kind of a virtual machine. There's no restriction. There is any kind of a compute you can create, any kind of backup strategy you can define. There's a, there's a huge flexibility. Uh, uh, from, a, from a reliability perspective, all these cloud providers provide the world-class SLS, which we can't meet on the private cloud. And to meet that private cloud, let's take an example that if you need a 99.999% uh, availability for your database, you need to put multiple clusters for setting up that database, or maybe even for that matter, for compute, for anything, you need to have multiple clusters or high availability environment to ensure that you have that kind of SLA. But for the cloud, by default, they have that kind of a reliability there. So uh, uh, so these three things, scalability, flexibility, reliability, are given by any CSP. Okay, And we literally can't compare them because all of them are very, very good into all three of them. When we look at the innovation and security, I will discuss these two points together because uh, the, the maximum innovation is going into security right now and the second most I will say into the analytics. But uh, the kind of investment these CSPs are doing in innovating new uh, services, uh, and uh, we'll talk about one innovation, Chat GPT, which is one of the investment made by Microsoft into analytics space, AI space. Uh, so day by day, they are innovating and there are large team, there are large set of people who are working on that innovations. We can't, when we, when we look from a local data center perspective, we can't have that kind of innovation by ourselves because there's a, there are lots go into that kind of innovation, uh, setting up that kind of innovation center and those big CSPs can do uh, that level of uh, things. From security perspective, security is, security is the basic requirement for anything we do in the IT space. And when we talk about security, some of these CSPs are making multi-billion investment, multi-billion dollar investment in the security, which uh, we can't have, or if we try to have on our private cloud or, or the private data centers, that will be very costly for us. And also when we have these CSPs, just think from a perspective, if we are using any CSP service in India, these CSPs have more than 30, 40 data centers all over the world. All security related threat, they are consolidating at a single, single place and just generating the intelligence information around it. So what they, 
with that consolidated information, they know that what kind of threats are happening in a different part of the world in US. And they quickly provide you patches and remove that vulnerability from the system in India also. So maybe by the time, by the time even that reaches to India, maybe that vulnerability is already removed from the system altogether. So that kind of strong security ecosystem has been built by this CSP. And day by day, they are innovating security and they are investing a lot in the security because that's the basic thing for any CSP. Let's talk about compliance. By if we if you look at the time saving by doing all that stuff, we anyway saving lots of time. Compliance is something all the ISO standard compliance is the basic thing. Uh, whenever any new CSP comes to any country, so let's take an example. If Google need to do the business in India, so government of India has given a list of compliances which they need to meet. That is the basic thing they need to do. That's the government prospective compliance, and that tells you about the. Uh, that's primarily around most of the ISO compliance, most of the SOC compliant. And then there are some uh, multiple tier of data centers, like most of our CSPs are tier three or tier four certified. Uh, now, uh, uh, there are certain certifications they need to do, and then the STQC also audit them. Uh, so all that kind of thing, all that kind of compliance, they are, the governments are very stringent, and obviously to meet those levels, the CSPs are also very careful about the compliance. And also, uh, these are the government compliances I was talking about. Then there are certain HIPAA compliance, uh, the industry compliance like HIPAA or PCI, DSS. And then now there's a new compliance which is coming up. In India is the Data Protection Act and that is aligned to the GDPR which is currently into the Europe. Where that says the global data protection regulation uh, regulation or the compliance something. So, uh, so that kind of regulation and compliance these CSPs are meeting. If something has happened into Europe, so by default, that GDPR compliant is applicable to all over the world also. Okay, so from these are the reasons practically which which makes cloud service provider a strong contender to leverage them. And every industry, every company, every business, every end customer is looking for security and compliance. And obviously the time saving is equal to the money saving. Before we move ahead, before we talk about the opportunity, the last thing I want to tell is that in today's world, every business is an IT business. You think about any business, they need to have a strong IT backbone to run their business. And IT cannot be slow. IT cannot be security compromised. IT cannot be compliance compromised. For all that stuff, you need a strong CSPs, a strong infra or maybe the the pass or SaaS, whatever you need a strong cloud service provider to run your business that is the basic necessity in today's world that's what i believe let's quickly talk about the different opportunities i see into the cloud world uh, you can just think about it and then there is opportunity into the cloud world whatever we used to do whatever the traditional work we used to do like uh, earlier, there used to be Windows administrator or the Linux system at Solaris administrator, the database administrator, the basic developers. Uh, all that now moved to cloud. Okay. So if you look at my screen right now, we're talking about the cloud engineers who, who, who provides, who maintain the cloud services for, for any customer or any business. The cloud administrator who are primarily monitor the cloud continuously and if there is any issues they troubleshoot because uh, though cloud will manage itself but still there are lots of proactive uh, uh, there are lots of proactive alerts you get on cloud there are certain patches information what you get on cloud which your people need to continuously monitor and manage it then we have the cloud architect this is the role and i would say the cloud architect and the cloud consultant these are the two roles which are in huge demand in the market right now uh, uh, cloud architects are primarily who structure the overall uh, how the cloud architecture should look like and the person who should know about all the different technology not only just the infrastructure you should be able to understand how the backup storage database even what kind of application so all that uh, from a security parameter perspective so cloud architect need to understand everything and then he design and um, uh, uh, plan the overall deployment also. So uh, that's the cloud architect's primary role. And then the cloud consultant, these, these people are consultant who tell customer that 
uh, which which are the different cloud services are available and what cloud services uh, uh, are the right fit for your business need okay maybe if someone is starting a business into uh, uh, where where infrastructure is heavy so the cloud consultant can guide that this is the right infrastructure services you should leverage or maybe this is the right csp who is more faster and more economical so there are different parameters for every business need and then they can compare between different csps and pick the right csp in this particular screen uh, this is the next level so what we discuss on the screen one is it's more of a generic roles into the cloud technologies but on this particular screen we're talking about a specific field in cloud in csp we're talking about security and data these are the two field which are which are in super demand after cloud architect and uh, as i said that security no one can think about a compromising from a security perspective so cloud security specialist is someone who who guides you from a security and compliance perspective who tells you that how should you ensure that your uh, cloud environment is fully secure and protected a certain level of security being provided by csp the public cloud service provider but beyond that what exactly maybe you need a, a certain kind of a compliance so maybe that security people will tell you that for your business this particular security environment should be deployed or these are the additional firewalls you need or these kind of additional same tool you required so whatever so all that security people will tell you the cloud data analyst and i think there should be cloud data scientist that's not written here but uh, there are cloud data analyst and there are cloud data scientist also so these are the role which are again into very very demand to the market who primarily uh, understand your data uh, uh, understand your data analyze your data and then put into a certain structure from where the information can be generated end of the day when we talk about the data analysts or data scientists are uh, the people who generate the information out of certain data so that's the primary role of these people uh, so that's another role we can we can explore then cloud software developers who uh, there are there are two further uh, track into the cloud software developer one who 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 build software on on cloud services the another one are the cloud software developer who are building those services for the csps also so uh, what i was what i'm trying to say that if you may use lambda functions on aws and build some application or maybe you are someone who's actually writing how lambda should work or what are the different innovation can happen into lambda or maybe the functions okay or maybe into the oracle functions or maybe mysql as a database what should be the back end uh, there are some back end developers who are actually writing code for these products that's also a very niche skill into cloud technologies we we talk about cloud network administrator uh, this is another role where we see decent opportunities uh, the people who can manage the networks primarily into the cloud but i'll i'll still say uh, in comparison to other role i'll still rate them slightly low and then uh, from uh, overall uh, management perspective uh, earlier we used to have delivery managers so right now we literally don't have cloud delivery managers kind of a profile it's more of a project managers profile because it's generally it's more of a implementation kind of engagements what we do in cloud and the day to day onm responsibilities and the day to day uh, management are are slightly low into the cloud perspective so uh, that's the project manager profile and then we have the cloud sales and the business development uh, uh, team because this is the hottest area uh, where people are uh, generating lots of revenue all the csps i'll show you some number in next few slides where you see that the way cloud is growing in worldwide you will see that the what kind of sales opportunities are there and how can people uh, uh, create a solid business people who have good experience so maybe even with the minimum experience also i think uh, that the pre sales role or the sales role is a good profile uh, who would like to explore in that area so this is something which as i as a written here that this these are the sample profiles and you can definitely explore more about them uh on maybe chat gpt or maybe on google i'm a bit supporter of a chat gpt uh we were talking about the how the cloud is growing what is the cloud growth actually we just pulled out some data from gartner if you look at for last what uh, seven eight years uh, uh, since 2019 the data we are showing here 
all these numbers are into the billions. So the dark blue color is the traditional on-premise uh, 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 infrastructure business that is 705 billion that was in 2019. But if you see the growth is very less into the dark blue color here. But the light blue color is the cloud business, which is kind of like growing very fast. And last six years is three times, 917 billion we're talking about. All these data is taken from the Gartner report. So these are the validated number. And by, by 2025, we are talking about that uh, the cloud business will surpass the traditional way of using the infrastructure services or maybe the traditional data center business. If you see the, 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 the speed it's growing, uh, this is how we are seeing the growth into the cloud business. And this is going only going to grow with the, with the autonomous cars are coming up or maybe the IoT based uh, uh, business is growing into the world or maybe the things like chat GPT is happening. So uh, all these uh, numbers will only go upward. I don't see any reason that there will be any challenge in next uh, 10, 15 years into the cloud business. I would say that's the only future now. I don't see uh, anything going to uh, be in traditional. I, I, I won't say that traditional will completely go away but traditional will not grow. Traditional is always going to stay there. Uh, but the maximum growth is into the cloud. Uh, that's my that's my personal view. Again, few more stats that how cloud is growing. And uh, the, the, the most important thing is that uh, uh, there, there will be 2 million jobs will be created in cloud computing by 2025. Uh, as I said, it's a Gartner report. So that's the thing what we should look at. Uh, every single day we're seeing that the if you if you go and search for any kind of profile you'll see that everything is around cloud so that's the one hot area we have uh industry adoption if you want to talk about certain use cases we'll we'll talk but i just want to give you one example on maybe i'll give you two example uh, one into the healthcare and another into the real estate but the rest of the examples are pretty standard i'm sure you're seeing it in an every single day when we talk about retail, you're seeing all the e-commerce platforms are currently on cloud. Uh, even uh, we are building a new uh, platform for the government of India and Ministry of Commerce that will be uh, uh, equivalent to Amazon and the Flipkart, maybe larger than larger than that. So that platform is completely on cloud and it's a blockchain-based uh, solution what we are building uh, here. So uh, in, in banking or financial services, uh, banking and financial services are uh, not into the public cloud end to end, but uh, they are keeping their core data on premise because there are certain restriction from the government of India and for, for, for that point, every government, they are not moving end to end public cloud, but what they are doing is they are the, they are the right industry for the hybrid cloud. They're keeping the core data on premise but the surrounding application like the customer experience applications or maybe the analytics, all that they are moving to cloud. So uh, if you, I'm sure you are you all are exploring uh, using the mobile applications of different uh, banks. So if you see the different kind of uh, statistics or uh, different kind of uh, advertisements you get on your mobile apps, that's only because of the different analysis they perform the way you are, way you are reacting on your applications. And uh, that's happening on the flow. Okay, so they are they are using the different analytics model there to provide you that kind of insight. I was talking about healthcare, so I just want to tell you that how the AR, VR, and the cloud-based technologies are helping into the healthcare. Um, uh, there is a product called Hololens, and there are different products. Even Apple and Google got their own AR, VR technologies. So there is Hololens from Microsoft which you can use into the healthcare. Uh, if you get time, just search for the HoloLens technologies and you'll see that how HoloLens is changing the healthcare world altogether. Uh, by wearing the HoloLens, the surgery is being performed. Uh, people are learning uh, uh, the medical science earlier for any kind of a, uh, learning, they need to uh, have some dead bodies and then cut them and then understand it. But with the HoloLens technologies, you will see that how they are directly pulling information from cloud and that too into the 3D view uh, uh, and able to learn better about the healthcare area. Uh, education during the COVID time, we all seen that how the education moved to the cloud completely. All these 
softwares we have teams uh, google meet or zoom or webex all these are the cloud based saas applications even the government of india i'm again referring them all the schools have provided uh, access to the different uh, content uh, government of india launched one initiative called uh, digital learning something that the, the short form is diksha actually so they have the cloud based learning platform uh, which uh, has been provided to all the government and the private schools to share the different ncert or the cbse books they have the real estate is moving towards the metaverse if you seen some example around the metaverse that's a very big use case around the around the cloud we can't have that kind of technologies on premise and uh, for for the metaverse kind of a technology we need high end computing and the big gpus or the graphic cards all that is only available on the csp and uh, and and uh, and the future uh, very soon will come that where uh, uh, it's already happening when we talking about the web 3.0 that the people are buying plots or actually on the cloud itself so uh, some some uh, th there are few exciting thing happening into that space that industry is adopting in their own way and manner there uh upcoming innovation i was talking about uh, uh the one thing i talk about the holo lens okay i maybe i just pick that into industry adoption but metaverse i just discuss about uh, metaverse and holo lens these are the few uh, uh, technologies which are literally innovating and then autonomous cars is the another thing what i think is the upcoming innovation uh, and chat gpt uh, i'm i can uh, suggest you guys i'm sure you reading about it on the different social media channels and if you haven't read about it please do read about the chat gpt and the relevant models it's not only the chat gpt the similar kind of uh, other projects also being done by the multiple cloud service providers uh, this these are the some amazing things happening on these are scary as well at certain times but these are the amazing things i would say uh, i would say the amazing things and the kind of response uh, we are getting is amazing uh, before i move to the last slide uh, uh on the, on the certification part i just want to tell you that this complete slide i have created by leveraging chat gpt only okay so uh, i asked chat gpt that what kind of content i should be presenting on uh, uh, on cloud computing to this kind of audience so this is guided by chat gpt to me and uh, i've i've generated this data in 10 minutes and then on basis of that i i, I tweeted it a little bit and uh, i'm just presenting to you guys so uh, those kind of basic things can be done by uh, the ai assistance tools we have okay uh, with that i will pass on to manoj uh, manoj can talk further about what kind of uh, certificate programs we are discussing here manoj hey jitender thank you very much for great insight uh, it was wonderful webinar done by you we have got a lot of in insights plus we have got idea about a lot of innovations like the one of it i like it uh, personally i have used it not for myself or for my family member the diksha also certainly i'm seeing it a uh, lot of use cases of metaverse which you have stated so great great insight jitender thank you very very much for those insights it was wonderful uh, webinar done by you uh, i hope that audience must have enjoyed and got a lot of insight fine so let me introduce myself first of all guys uh, i won't be taking much of your time definitely uh, i'll be speaking about the course what we have as an offering and little bit insight so i'm um, i'm i'm working in the unix as a lead cloud architect uh, coming out with the vast 15 years experience in the domain uh where i'm extensively using all three public cloud which jitender has mentioned whether it is uh, azure aws or gcp i'm certified on all three uh on data engineering and data science domain including the architect level certifications well trying to make you guys understand that um what this program is all about and how it is going to be better fit for everyone who is going to transit or wanted to leverage 
a career in cloud. Uh, so as Jitender has stated, a uh, lot of statistics. Uh, I would like to add a few more points into that. Um, what I have uh, researched and observed uh, in the given time period, um, as you guys know, in 2020, uh, March onward, we, uh, we were into pandemic uh, and pandemic was somehow uh, not good for society, for the world, but somehow it has helped to trigger up a lot of industries, you know, and cloud industry is something or digital uh, industry is something which has actually boomed on that period. So uh, um, as having said that, uh, the official news which government of India has stated that, uh, I mean, just talking about some statistic within the India, and then I'll probably relate it to the across the globe. Well, that specific period of 2020, 2021, uh, when we are completely into the mode of, uh, uh, you know, uh, silo at our home, uh, or in other words, we call it lockdown, right? So that is a period where the most of the digital transformations or digital innovations has took place. Uh, whether we know that or we were out of scope, but yes, uh, it's a truth. And that has increased tremendous uh, demand on certified professionals on cloud as people have started moving cloud. Having said that, you see, we are conducting this webinar on Zoom and uh, we have seen the transition of Zoom, um, what it was earlier before pandemic and what it is after pandemic. So, I mean, a lot of innovation, we see it in that cloud is the main platform or main uh, domain which has emerged, which means uh, considering that two years, uh, the statistics shows that the growth of cloud computing was around 10% every year, which has gone away and have started growing from 2021 to 2022 by 44%. So we are seeing it, there's a drastic 34% of you know, jump or what has happened uh, into the cloud computing role. And that's why uh, we have come up with uh, some solution for people, those who are there uh, in the outside world to facilitate them, to educate them, to make them capable to grab those opportunities uh, uh, which are there in the market. Um, as um, uh, you, you see, you have seen a lot of opportunities, a lot of domains which are going to be open up uh, for all of you uh, in a different, different role in IT. Well, MIT is one of the pioneer. We know that under the Manipal banner. Um, I would like to say one, uh, one line for Manipal uh, Institute of Technology uh, with combination of this cloud computing program. It's, it's something like you are traveling in Emirates into its first class, which means Emirates is your MIT, which is already world-class educational platform. And you are traveling inside uh, first class of that Emirate, which means the cloud computing program is your first class. Where what we have did, we have consolidated, uh, taken a lot of advices from the industries and tried to articulate and stitch the gap what people used to have it, uh, especially in this domain of cloud computing and trying articulating the whole curriculum in a way it can fit in uh, more and more people, those who wanted to transit, those who wanted to build their career in cloud computing. As has been mentioned by uh, Jitinder a lot, so I have a few more pointers over here about the program. Uh, as the program starts, it's, it's, it's going to give you a platform, which we call it technically called bridge-based platform or bridge course. Uh, for the bridge course is going to help people, those who are not into cloud or they don't know about the cloud or they are already in IT, wanted to transit into cloud. So bridge course, as the name says, it is going to help you to transition from your existing domain or your existing IT world to the cloud world. Then you will be having the main course going to be given. It's like you are having a starter, which is a bridge course over here. 
and the main course is uh, already equipped with all three major players in the public cloud domain where you are going to deeper dive into this uh, program on aws platform as it's a top-notch cloud provider as of now uh, having said that we are also going to facilitate you with the understanding of the cloud computing over microsoft platform which we call it azure uh, from the various prospects it could be uh, infrastructure management data engineering solution designing etc cetera, etc cetera. so all that has been already facilitated in the curriculum on the azure side as well we also have provision a lot of uh, google cloud uh, uh, you know uh, the google provides a lot of uh, free services and free uh, courses certification courses officially so we have tried stitching those google cloud understanding also for all of you so that what you can become you can become a hyperscaler uh, cloud solution designer whether you are designing provisioning helping supporting you'll be hyperscaler mode uh, which means doesn't matter what platform you're working on whether it is aws azure and gcp you'll be equipped with all of them as you know that we still need to deeper dive into some of it so that we can say that it's my primary skill. Like an example I would like to put up over here. When you are learning how to drive a car, first of all, you should have to learn it one of it, whether it's a sedan, whether it is a SUV or hatchback. At least you have a focus on one of the class of the uh, car and you targeted that and you learn it deeper into it then probably you can switch it from one class to another class of your car and that's how we also have stitch our course like that where we are going to give you a deeper dive into aws where at the same time you are also going to get the understanding parallel to our azure platform from infrastructure and data engineering prospect which is a, which are the core domain um, as per monster these are the two domains which are more in demand and it's going to be grown like uh, anything in upcoming future um, as Gartner says uh, and partnering with monster they have released one um, you know statistic by the way at the same time gcp has its own presence you know so we are also going to give you guys uh, the flavor of GCP. Um, having said that, you are going to be facilitated with the core infrastructure knowledge. How do we provision infrastructure knowledge? How do we build infrastructure over cloud? At the same time, how security can be applied on it? How do we do a data engineering onto that? At the same time, if at all you have to migrate from on premises to the cloud that information that knowledge that practice will be also going to be facilitated on this um, uh, cloud computing program on top of that after finishing this six month program you are going to be awarded with the uh, in, uh, international grade certification uh, by mit as I, I have already mentioned what mit is as Statistics says, uh, or you may can Google it, we, MIT has already been ranked uh, number six in India, number one in Karnataka, and uh, overall, if you consider it in Southern India, it's uh, number two overall as, as university is concerned. So world-class certificate, which is going to be validated or it is valid for across globe, Plus, the type of education you needed or type of knowledge you needed has been stitched over here. So the program tells you uh, each insight, where at the same time, it is not going to make you, uh, uh, or it is not going to be lengthy for all of you. It's more hands-on based, which means you are going to be exposed with a lot of um, real case studies uh, uh, like uh, I'm, I'm a facilitator for that so i can relate you as jitendra was talking about hybrid cloud 
So uh, one of the example we have tried looking into it to make you guys understand and design it like suppose uh, we wanted to facilitate services like Google Drive or OneDrive where I wanted to give 15 GB or 20 GB free to everybody who is going to sign up. Uh, uh, at the same time, I'm also going to facilitate my premium members separately. So uh, there is a there is a hybrid cloud necessity which I wanted to do it. Uh, the premium services will not be uh, uh, will not be given to everybody. Uh, they have to sign up. They have to pay some amount, which means there'll be option of scaling. I want to make them highly available uh, data uh, every time. So I might be putting it on the cloud, uh, that storage, and I'll be having my on-premise storage where uh, which I'm managing it from uh, for, for the users, what I have for free services. So like that, a lot of uh, industry grade from different, different domain has been articulated as a case study use cases uh, in this program. Hoping that uh, um, uh, we'll be having some of the questions going to be come up uh, related to that. So feel free to let me know if you guys have any question. Please park your question in the chat window. Uh, I love to answer most of the question which comes to my jurisdiction. If any question uh, uh, which is not related to my part, definitely it will be answered by someone uh, for the time being later uh, on the stage. So thank you very, very much for joining this webinar. I hope that you guys have got good insight about cloud computing and the projection and need of cloud computing and a little bit about this program. Definitely um, uh, you need to seek out a lot of other insight and you can get connected with our team to know and deeper dive about this program. So uh, would like to hear from all of you if you guys have any question. So house is open for everyone. Please park your question into the chat window. Uh, look. Great. Not questions, but we are receiving some compliments. Uh, thank you, Nagi Subramani. Uh, Manoj, if you would like to take up this question. By yes, Papa. sure. Yes. Yeah, Pavan, I can see it. So there's a question from Pawan uh, talking about certificates. Well, this certificates, as I mentioned, right, it's coming directly from MIT. Uh, and it is, um, uh, you know, it is authorized for to be used or uh, across globe. Uh, if people, those who wanted to travel abroad, I would like to mention it one important point over here. Uh, there is an added point you are going to get it if you are sitting for IELTS IELT exams or um, if you are looking for uh, you know uh, business uh, or uh, uh, professional visas uh, overall. So I mean, if you're coming out with a certificate that's um, uh, more recognized and valid across globe, uh, as Mahe is uh, uh, already a popular body uh, across globe. Uh, Abdullah has another question. Yeah, three cloud, AWS, Google, Azure in architecture, professional associates level. Yes. So uh, as, as I mentioned, um, we have uh, first did some research and then we have stitched our course so that it will be uh, facilitating everyone uh, who is going to be in different, different role, whether it is an administration role, whether it is a management role, whether it is an associate role or architect role are going to fit into it. So uh, we are trying to uh, give everything uh, for everyone, but in a concise, accurate manner, uh, not PM, uh, yeah. So if I say, as this course is pretty much inclined on technical aspects, at the same time, it talks about the management too from the cloud prospect. But uh, uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, yes, it do help you to transit or do help you to get into your cloud project management level as well. So those who are already into project management or uh, into the decision management level, uh, they can also leverage it. And we already have 
conducted this program a couple of times for decision makers. So they have successfully completed this program and they are well aware and they are handling cloud uh, across the organizations. Uh, Pawan, uh, I've given you speaker access. Uh, if you want to say something, please. Right. right. Yeah. Hi, Manoj. Hey, I mean, Pawan. <laughs> this question is to you, in fact. Right. Well, after course completion, right? And we will be designated as what? Like, it's like they're just giving us like cloud computing engineer, architect, or what? Because we cannot be, uh, we have not have a practical exposure still, right? But we get the basic knowledge understanding about the whole cloud. And I know all the flavors, what we got in the market right now, right? But still, what do you be designated as? For example, like if you do the AWS, like you say, like AWS certified engineer, like mm -hmm. now after completing in the MIT, what will I be at? You, you will be called as a cloud professional. Professional, okay, right. I mean, I mean uh, one more question, like- uh, Go ahead, please. Right. So, I mean, maybe it's a practical question I can say, like, for example, now I'm coming to you to understand all the clouds flavors and the way they are, uh, how they are designed in the back end. I, I'm, I'm basically from an, I'm an, I'm a security engineer. Mm -hmm. I work for a product and my mm -hmm. product supports in-house as well as the SaaS environment. Mm -hmm. I'm not into SaaS much uh, because it is starting now. And, 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 and it's, it, that's my interest towards the cloud. So that's me, that is where, I'm interested to come in and to learn about cloud so that I can get a good hold on it once it's totally, I mean, it's full-fledged launch. Mm -hmm. I currently have two customers, but even I get some opportunities to work uh, in my organization itself on the SaaS environment. However, I still feel myself uncomfortable wherein, I mean, how this whole thing is like, because, uh, I see the cloud is a cloud. I mean, simple cloud. Maybe the cloud looks like something. I mean, <clears throat> so if I go directly to the certificate, like for example, now we are supporting SaaS on the AWS platform, right? Mm -hmm. So if I if I pursue a career, I mean, if I pursue a direct certificate from the AWS, I mean, I'm trying to understand like how is this or how is this course is uh, uh, giving me this edge over AWS? Or, or any flavor in that matter. All right. Fair hope, you're, hope you're understanding yes, where I'm... I got the point. So uh, to be honest, uh, uh, I would like to mention it one uh, important point over here. Mm -hmm. uh, for you and for other as well, uh, see, when we go for any certification, whether uh, it is coming directly from OEM uh, or we, we, we are actually trying to compare a certificate and a degree. So degree uh, means it's uh, it's an honor and certificate is like a, a feather in your honor crown, you know? So when you wear a crown, it's like your degree, you know? And this PGCP cloud computing is a degree what you are going to get it awarded. Now, if you stitch it further on AWS certification, Azure certification, whatever, that is your feathers onto your crown, right? It means there's a big difference or big difference in terms <laughs> of weightage, a big difference in terms of looking it out. Like, as you said, if I'm going for uh, AWS cloud certification, whether it is associate label, whether it is architect label, they will only talk about their own platform. You know, They will not make you a hyperscaler person, which means, what if today you are working or using AWS, tomorrow your organization or you yourself has planned that uh, um, because there's a great uh, uh, association which has happened between Microsoft Azure to uh, uh, chat GPT. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, we are seeing it. There's a drastic change which we are going to be uh, seen in future. There are a lot of usability of Azure is going to be increased. You want to move it on Azure. Uh, that, that is the hardest part because this transition uh, is not easy uh, overall. Even if you know cloud, still this transition uh, is very difficult, you know? Likewise, how we transition from one city to another city, we takes time to adopt it in the city, to understand the city. Likewise, 
you will be getting little tough time transiting from AWS to Azure or so that to GCP, you know? Uh, having said that, this program is already facilitating and making that transition simple. I mean, it's giving you a bridge. You already have a bridge. You already have built the path. Now, only thing what you have to do it is a travel. I have to switch it from AWS to Azure. That's it. So it's, it's making you simpler where all OEM certifications are not going to make you uh, capable of doing this. Hope that I have answered your question. Pavan? Uh, yeah, one last question. Yeah, Manoj? go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, you really clarified my doubt. So you, you're saying that like, I'll be, uh, I mean, I, we will be titled as uh, a master's or whatever degree we get it. So that's a good part, uh, which I, I'm, I'm, I mean, it really helps. As you said, it's a crown. Absolutely, I agree. Now, <clears throat> now this, this crown, what we achieve is, is in the part of only a six months. I mean, basically, if you look into it as a post graduation program, normally will be somewhere around two years, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this does this really, I, I am not questioning, I mean, I don't know how it is. Uh, I'm not saying this, I mean, is six months is really uh, Tom do as a master's in the cloud company. I mean, they do really accept that or they, they do really look for this two years course or something like that. Very good, Papa. I would like to appreciate you. Well, uh, let me tell you the uh, truth about uh, you know curriculums which has been designed uh, uh, generally by academicians. Um, see, this this particular offering what we have given it's not an offering which is designed by somebody who is from universities. It was designed by people like me, uh, people like you, uh, people like who are practitioner in the market. So honestly saying that uh, duration, what we tried encapsulating it is just a, a, just a, a psychological prospect. Let's say I'm saying, oh, I'm giving you a two years program, and then you are going to be awarded as master of cloud computing, where you'll see in that two years span, uh, you are going to be exhausted about non-realistic stuff a lot. Uh, because uh, I have come across, I have also did a lot of degrees, you know, and a lot of certification at the same time. And what I have experienced that, uh, a lot of things are non-useful useful for me, but as it is a part of the curriculum, I'm forced to do that. Whereas uh, what we tried doing it here, we try and cutting down those gaps, uh, don't, those unnecessary stuff, you know, so that the course will be more focused about, uh, about industry, about the practices, what you have to learn. Uh, because uh, when you look into this course, uh, this course, the uh, narrator or the curator into this is already a practitioner who has worked uh, almost around uh, uh, five, six countries and they have supported multiple domain. So he's speaking his entire knowledge uh, into the course, uh, which means he, the course is very crisp. And when the course is very crisp, definitely the duration will be also string, all right? So that's why six month is more than sufficient, uh, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you so much, Manoj, you nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. You're Thanks welcome. so much, Pawan, for the wonderful. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, is, this is always uh, uh, hunting my mind. I mean, when I'm saying, when I'm spending six months, like, and, and you're giving a master's, what makes it? I mean, I, mean, I, I actually was a diploma holder first, and then I was in Gulf, my friend used to just walk in, whereas I used to stay and sit like all other laborers, waiting for my uh, uh, entry visa to be surrendered by my company. I'm shocked. What am I doing? I mean, why am I standing here? So it happened with me. And then I, I completed my BSc something with uh, Manipal as well. So I have no issues now. I mean, I, I can go uh, fly across. But I mean, this program is giving, I mean, um, I, I like the words which Manoj put in across, wherein you're eliminating all the things and you're just adding the one needed. And so that we can, we are ready for 
the market, right? So that's that's pretty much important for me. I, I like the course, but uh, let's understand, I mean, and the fee structure, but the thing is February and March, like I have my kids, so it's it's pretty rough for me to join is, uh, I mean, if we got any other slots after March, April, then I'll be interested to look into. Uh, sure, but I'll be happy to arrange a call back. Um, sure, thank, thank you. Them just reach out to you. They'll reach out to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Manoj, thank you so much for your answers. I'm, I'm pretty happy. Thank you, Pawan. Cheers. Cheers. Um, Manoj, I'm not sure um, I'll take this question. Do we get AWS certificates as well as part of this course? Um, Naga Superbani, not really, because already you are getting a degree. I, I, I stated that already, right? As Pawan asked, right? It's a crown what you are going to get it. What you are talking about is a feather. So you relate it, whether you want a feather or you want a crown, you already getting a crown, right? So crown is more valuable than this normal certification. To be honest, certifications are something to me. I mean, I already, I'm a, I like, if you see my profile, I'm already like 8X in Azure, 8X in AWS, 3X in GCP. I know that. How does it values in my work? It, it didn't, but uh, when we sat first time, we realized that, mm -hmm. okay, this certification requires a lot of, uh, you know, preparation, which is not in real time use. And I have to sit for a three years exam where simply uh, some scenario will be thrown as an MCQ and I have to validate that. And then the certification will be given. The only thought behind the certification, this OEM has it, validation, because every uh, you know course you go for, differently there is a validation mechanism happened. Otherwise, um, having said that, this course curriculum is more than that, uh, if you see it as a part of the value, you know? So in a nutshell, no, AWS certification will not be given in this course, but it will make you ready for that. Great. I think uh, we have exceeded, you know, much beyond the designated, the designated time. So I, uh, if, if you don't have any other questions, we can just wrap this up for today. Great. I don't see other questions coming, Manoj. So thank you so much for your time. And uh, I, because uh, it was a wonderful session. Thank you everyone for joining and uh, hope to connect with you guys later. Thank you, Apia. Thank you, everyone who attended the webinar. I hope that you have got good insight about this program. Happy to see you guys on floor. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.